Thank you very much. All right. Real pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Let's see, do we have a, ah, perfect. Hello. So I am uh, one of the founders of Anki. We're a robotics and AI company in San Francisco, and we are making video games in the real world. So that uh, probably doesn't mean too much, but I'll explain what that actually means. So first, a little bit of background. We came at this from the world of robotics, AI, and machine learning. My founders and I, we met at Carnegie Mellon in the uh, Robotics Institute during our PhDs. And this is how we spent our PhDs. This was my uh, project. Probably not, not the first thing you'd expect to see at a, a conference like this. This is a big autonomous vehicle. It um, you know, drives off-road. We'd pop it down in the forest. It would have to use its onboard sensors, computations, uh, figure out how to interpret the environment, and get to a checkpoint 12 kilometers away. It would probably cost about $600,000, the, kind of the, the versions we were looking at. It was a combination of um, you know, a lot of government funding, NASA, Caterpillar, John Deere. But now we're making consumer products. And how does this all tie together? Well, the reality is, is that what we are doing is we're using robotics and AI to, to bring video games into the real world. And um, the way we got to this is that we started really thinking about how there's these technologies that are pretty amazing, but they're trapped. Uh, they're trapped in the labs. They're trapped in defense and space and agriculture and industrial applications. We wanted to make consumer products. And specifically, we got really excited about entertainment as a starting point. So when you think about physical entertainment, you probably think about toys. Um, you, um, you think about uh, cute guys like this, where there's, uh, there's something really powerful about the physical world. The fact that you can you know, touch and hold and collect these sort of characters. You can name them. You can give them to a friend. It's what's made the toy industry so successful, despite the fact that there's been almost no innovation as far as the core gameplay uh, in the physical side of the, uh, on the physical side. But despite that, it's really powerful. And there's something about toys that you cannot replicate on a screen. And it's why they're still such a strong force today. When you do go on a screen, this is a world that you all are so familiar with. Everything's possible. Your characters evolve, your worlds expand, there's progression, there's rules or structure. You have a game that starts on day one and completely changes to the second month or the second year if you keep playing it. And uh, probably the most important thing about video games that makes them so enjoyable is something that I, I know I take for granted, uh, probably everybody does to some degree. It's the fact that there's always, uh, there's always many characters and even if they're very simple and controlled by humans or the game, it's that interaction between those characters that creates this diversity of situations that keeps things fun. But at the end of the day, all of those really beautiful things about video games are trapped on the screen. And whenever anybody's tried to take them out of the screen, they've lost the essence of what makes that gameplay so special. And so what we decided to do at Anki was to try to create this new category of entertainment at this intersection of toys, video games, and mobile devices to literally make it possible to program video games on top of physical characters in the real world and combine the best elements of these two worlds. And one of the uh, biggest uh, reasons why this is possible now and it wasn't possible before is the hardware landscape. From, in terms of components, they're more capable, faster, less expensive than ever before. We can get a 50 megahertz computer inside our cars for about $1.20. It's something that cost uh, $2,500 uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and mobile devices, I think everybody understands how powerful that is, where you now have not just computation, but beautiful interface device. And even more importantly, in a way, the ability to connect to the internet and continue to push new content to an experience that otherwise would be very, st uh, very, very um, stagnant. And so our first product is Anki Drive. Uh, we launched it late last year um, with Apple. Uh, it is a racy game in the real world. It's a track that you are allowed. The cars are physical, uh, but they're characters. You can customize them. You can give them special abilities, weapons. They each have their own skills. Um, you have precise control over them. And whichever ones you don't control, they'll drive themselves. Like the artificial intelligence, the game will drive them. And they'll compete against you and do things that you would never expect. And so we launched with Apple uh, in October. We were in every Apple store uh, in North America and on our website. Uh, reception has been really great. And so what I wanted to do was to talk about where this is going and why this is something that might be very interesting to this particular audience. So to do that, I wanted to first talk about the underlying technology. What is it that makes this possible? So this is kind of our platform. So in the end, this is a robotics problem. This is uh, us taking something physical and having it understand the environment around it and come to life. 
And so in the end, every problem in robotics, you can pretty much break down into three categories of problems. It's positioning, which is understanding what's around you. Reasoning is thinking about it and deciding what to do. And then execution is making it happen in the real world. Uh, this is the core of almost every problem in robotics. It's just that the constraints and flavors change. The hardest part for us wasn't just solving this to make an intelligent racing experience in the real world, but doing it at a price point and reliability that actually makes sense for a consumer product. Anki Drive costs under $200. The sort of sensors that we would use on the robot that you saw, one sensor cost $5,000 at least. And so that was the biggest challenge. And so in the context of racing, we have this, uh, you know, this really fine looking characters here. We want to have them come to life in the real world. So let's say we want this car in the back to be intelligent and to really understand what's going on and to pass the other cars. So as we talked about, the first thing you need is positioning, which means that every car needs to understand where it is and where the other ones are relative to it. So this is uh, obviously something that's very challenging and it's a big piece of what we've had to be able to make work very precisely. Once you have positioning, you can do something pretty powerful, and that's reasoning, which is now, for the first time, you can actually think about that information to make intelligent decisions. So this is how our cars that are controlled by the AI actually think. It's like a game of chess where they think about what they're going to do, what you're going to do in return, and back and forth, and, uh, except that they do it uh, all on a mobile device. It's thinking for the game. It's like the conductor in some sense. And it's considering thousands of potential actions every single second for all the cars in the game. And so now once you have a really intelligent plan, execution is making it happen in the real world. And this gets ugly again because you have high speed driving, slip, and physics. But we've been able to get this to work really precisely. And so the really powerful thing happens when you combine the three of those, positioning, reasoning, and execution. And that's when you can do something truly powerful. And that is to abstract away everything that's physical and just treat these characters as if they were just virtual characters in a video game. And now we can literally take all those really wonderful things that we love about video games, the adaptability, the personality, the structure, the rules, and the true interaction, and actually make them come to life in physical form. And so first product, Donkey Drive. This is a product video to show you a little bit about what the game does. It's a little bit of a movie trailer there. So I want to give you a little peek of what, uh, what the capabilities are to make this possible. And now I want to show you just a bit of the gameplay, just a really quick demo. So we always know how live, live demos go. So let's, uh, let's put this to work. Yep. So Stefan here is going to help us out. So this runs off of mobile devices, um, iOS devices right now, iPhones, iPod touches, iPads. So I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, yellow car here. Uh, Korai, uh, Stefan's going to be the silver, and we're going to make the red car the AI. And so um, I'm going to start by just driving on my own just to show you a little bit about what's possible. So let's see, do we have video of... Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is my controller, and this is the replacement for the screen. So the cars drive themselves. I can control the speed so I can go faster, I can go slower. I can steer, go towards the inside, towards the outside. Everything's very precise. We have weapons, abilities. This is where it gets interesting. So Stefan's gonna join me here in a second. And so he's gonna be controlling his car. Now this is where it gets fun. I'm gonna get behind his car. And so now I'm gonna take my machine gun and I can actually take him out. And the fact that this actually works and comes to life is because the phone understands everything that's happening. So we have a video game in physical form. You can hear bullets puncturing metal. You, you hear, can you guys hear? Is it hooked up? Yep, okay, perfect. We have special abilities, you have a tractor beam, have the ability to drive backwards if I want to. And this becomes a video game experience, like a Mario Kart in the real world. And so now we can do something really interesting and uh, add a third car. 
where this one's completely control controlling himself. So this is the AI character. And so now we're actually being attacked and uh, Stefan's being stalked by an AI controlled character who's driving himself. So he's figuring out where I am, he's getting behind me, he's, uh, uh, he's steering, he's maneuvering, he's defending himself. <laughs> Stefan just honked at me. And so we can bring gameplay into physical form with a personality for each character where every character has certain strengths, certain weaknesses. Each one has different skills. So it's a uh, quick, quick victory by the... To the oh. That's pretty nasty. Okay, so he, he just took us all out. He's, he's pretty mean. This is on hard. Um, we only have a few people at the office that can actually beat the AI on hard, especially when there's multiples of them. But this gives you an idea of what the gameplay can actually do. And in fact, let's see, let's maybe go back to the slides. Perfect. And so one of the things that makes it special now is that these characters, which on their own are beautiful characters, we can actually bring them to life with skills, with personalities, with different weapons and special abilities. And in fact, um, you know, one of the ways that we try to really amplify this and make this a game that doesn't feel like it's something for a six-year-old is with the design itself. Uh, we actually worked with a famous designer in um, Hollywood named Harold Belker, who does futuristic vehicles for Hollywood movies. So he did Minority Report cars, uh, uh, the early version of the Batmobile Tron uh, white cycle, and um, the Iron Man face mask and car. And so, it's a way for us to take that sleek, sexy, futuristic style, but then not just stop at how the cars look, but actually go further and customize them. Each one has its own abilities, its own strengths. You upgrade it over time. You give it new weapons, new special abilities. You have an upgrade tree. And because we have a video game inside the phone that matches the physical world, we can synchronize the two and bring all these things to life. And this is a pretty unfamiliar concept because nobody's really thought of a character being the uh, aggressive one, or the defensive one, or the more balanced one, or the fastest, most maneuverable one in the game. It's almost like a role-playing game where now the physical character is the, uh, the, the character himself that, that you upgrade over time. You cultivate, you design him in your own style, you give him the abilities that you want, and it stays with the character. And so it becomes like a role-playing game, but in the physical world. And because we have the ability to have the physical world and the virtual world understand each other with robotics and AI as that inner layer, we can bring this to life and suddenly make physical entertainment go much deeper than anything that's been possible before. And so why is this relevant to this audience? So we're a, uh, we're a technology company that's kind of straddling the line between technology and entertainment and really trying to figure out all the ways that we can bring this to life. And you guys, more than anybody else, much more than, than, than I do, know how powerful it is when you create a character. So a character that, is, uh, uh, that is, has a personality, has a depth, has a brand, has an identity that, if it's done right, can last for decades. And this is something that's very apparent in, in uh, movies. It's very apparent in video games. When a character is really successful, they tend to go into the physical world as well. And what happens is that the character ends up oftentimes also being successful in its toy form, but it loses the essence and the soul of what made it so special. It's there in terms of the physical brand, but it doesn't have the personality, the, the story is not there. The imagination is what fills in all the gaps. And so my challenge to you is, as an industry, think about how when you look at this technology, you know, for us, it's probably pretty apparent that we're thinking about this much broader than a racing game. So as a company, we want to do a lot more things in robotics and AI to make the physical world intelligent. Even in terms of entertainment, this is much more than a racing game. It's a platform for us to have physical characters understand their environment and to come to life with software, where you can actually program in structure, personality, rules, and all the things that we're used to. So now, as an industry, how would you use technology like this and platform like this to bring some of the magic that's made the, the characters that you've created so powerful and so memorable into the physical world in a way that has never been possible before and in a way that actually amplifies the impact of those characters beyond anything that is just a physical, uh, uh, a physical avatar? And more broadly, in terms of entertainment, how would you use this to make a tie between the physical and the virtual in a way that's never existed? Because I think uh, all of us would agree is uh, the transition from virtual to physical is a really lossy transition, and this is a way for us to bridge that gap a little bit better. 
So we're very early in our, in our life cycle. We're just thinking about all the ways that we can make use of this. We have a lot of ideas that we're working on and a lot of things that we have in mind. Uh, and then I would challenge you to think about what would you do if you put this technology to use for the sort of projects that you've worked on. Thank you very much.